And welcome to Action Dine Industries. My name is Matt. This is the Procreate Tutorials. Today I'm going to be showing a set of brushes that I made that is pretty rad. And let's take a look at where to get it. You can either get it on uh, actiondineindustries.com. You can scroll down to the bottom and you will find Procreate brush section there. Otherwise, you can use the link that we've also provided that goes straight to the Gumroad store, which is this. And so we've got three uh, free brush sets for it, okay? Uh, Nebula Action Basic, one, two, and three. I had to split it up into three because they have uh, size limitations for the files that you can uh, put on there. And uh, these brush sets are actually kind of big because these were all based on actual photographs of mine. Not necessarily this one, maybe. Uh, I've got a collection of clouds and ink that tend to work really good for space scenery and, and whatnot. A couple other examples of some of the stuff I've done. So ink especially is a lot of fun. You get some real crazy stuff going on there. And I, I don't know about you. When I see this, I see galaxy, you know. Like that's just that's just rad. I mean that looks like nebula. Heck yeah. Super cool. So I took a, you know, some of these photos you're seeing here and several that you didn't see. And let's hop back into Procreate here. And I made a bunch of brushes out of these. I tried making something like a space theme, like to be able to paint nebulas and stars and, and whatnot. So let's get started and check this out. Uh, let's start off with, uh, I'm going to go through all these brushes, not, not every single one. And I'll explain as I go. So there's this couple that are these ribbon ones. Gas, uh, silky ribbon, planetary rings, gaseous ribbon, very similar. They're just going to give you this sort of, and this could be like the silhouette of a planet. You know, it's like atmosphere. You know what I'm talking about. And you do the, oh, you can do that with it too. Points at the pencil. I'm not sure what those would be for space. Asteroid tail? Could be. That's, I didn't even think of that. Oh. I just murdered it. That's all right. Let's clear that out. It's, some of these are just different variations of that. Um, different texture in the in the trail of it. So these could be like for rings uh, of a planet, something like that. So when you get to a brush that says combo at the end, it's one of these new brush set, uh, brushes that have two brushes in one, basically. So there's kind of like two layers of it uh, doing stuff. And those are the really funky ones. I mean, what the... What the heck is this one even doing? This one's so weird. What I'm gonna say, this is kind of glitchy. Not really. It's, it's kind of cool. Definitely, this was definitely some cloud, uh, some cloud pictures. Probably not one of my more favorite brushes. I tend to not like, I think I left kind of a squarish edge to these. I don't like that. I mean, maybe that's just how the clouds are. It does get some good, like these are kind of cool. It does have a kind of a cool effect. But if I just look at, um, see there's the dark variation. So I'm gonna switch to this ribbon in order 
Just to show you the dark. A dark version is going to be something you would use. It's going to be basically dust. You know, like when you see pictures of the Milky Way, there's always that part that's these dark patches. And it's actually because there's there's dust there blocking the light from getting through. So you you can't really see, you know, what's glowing behind it anymore. That's kind of common. So that's something that you can paint in. And that's what those dark versions are. And if you notice, I didn't change my color. It's still, uh, it's still red. So when you switch to these dark ones, no matter what color you're using, it's, it's going to be making it dark. So that way you don't have to keep switching colors back and forth if you're trying to kind of going through these with similar color. And they all do a bit of a, most of them anyway, do a bit of a, a hue shift as you uh, are painting. What is this one? Restricted flow. Crazy. So you can see I've got red, but even though I'm getting some orange and yellow in there. So these, you know, these are going to take your, your, your color and they're going to kind of work around that a little bit. Because they're all, they're all going to have a little bit of a hue shift. This is probably better at a lower opacity. Yeah, look at that. Nice and subtle. So, I mean, these could be used for, like, fog or clouds. Kind of whatever. I mean, this is almost a good fill for... Look at that. It's almost like an old piece of paper already. Draw a pirate map on here. That's awesome. We'll clear that. Go to the... Nebulaic Entanglement Combo. Whoa. Let's switch up the colors here. We're gonna go with, we're gonna go with yellow. This one can't get, doesn't look good when it gets too big. That's cool. And dark version of that. And a light version, so the combo is kind of like the light and the dark combined. Sometimes not, but generally, yes. The light versions are, as you can see, mostly just painting light onto it with that, uh, with that texture. What do we got? Streaked Wisp. It's following the pencil a little bit. That's kind of cool. Clear that out. And let's move down to Globular Mystery. I gave them all weird names. I know I did, but some of them I kind of uh, feel like when something has a unique name, even if it's ridiculous like these, you, you remember it and you can find it find it a little bit quicker. This one's pretty cool. So if I switch to the dark version of it, hey, there we go, and paint over it. <clears throat> create some, create some more depth. But we'll move on. Turbulent clouds light. All right, maybe best with a, uh, we'll turn the opacity down. It's a little bit better, a little softer. And agitated clouds light. Let's switch this to green. Hey, that's pretty cool. This is definitely, I don't know, was this from clouds or ink? I can't even, I always try to guess when I'm using these. Some of them you can tell. I think this was ink actually. I think I was about to say clouds, but again, yeah, this is one you could just, you could do a cool texture fill on the whole page and plop some text in there. Let's see what else we've got. Violent clouds. Ooh. Not just agitated. These are 
these are definitely violent clouds. I mean, if I walked in, into an alley and I saw these nebulaic clouds, holy moly. Have you ever seen such violence? Let's change colors. What if we do another color on top of this? Let's clear that. If we do slightly less opacity. A little more subtle. That one's cool. It's kind of big. It's making it a little... Oh, there we go. That's pretty rad. And let's move on. Flowing ripples light. Ooh. Look at that. Well, would you look at that? Let's change the color again. Get like a blue. Oh, see? Look at that. It's already, it's done. My work is done here. Wisp, wisped turbulence light. Oh, okay, yeah. I guess it's okay. Soft dramatic. Now this one you gotta, oh, here we go. I didn't make it that big. Oh, you gotta kind of work at this one. I see that's kind of a I try not to leave evidence of repeated textures, but I have failed. But if I make it big, but I suppose every time you brush down, it's maybe a little bit different. Anyway, let's move on. The soft ghost. You know what? I think we need to switch to purple for this. Green would have been a good alternative. Slimer fans say, Slimer. Did, how many of you actually said Slimer? If you did, I'm very proud of you. You did a good job, and you deserve a break. You, you put your feet up on whatever furniture you see fit to accommodate those feet of yours. You enjoy your time off. What's the name of this bread? This is the soft ghost. This one's kind of, it's kind of cool. Let's move on. Bubbled debris light. All right, going to pink. Whoa. I go a little lighter over here. Kind of cool. And patient phantom trails. And there's a reason I named it that. I'm going to start coloring, and it takes a second to show up. Coloring over it for quite a while to get it to show. Ooh, that one is, I do like that one, Patient Phantom Web. This one's not quite so bad, but this, I mean, come on. That's, that's where it's at. Come on, space nerds. You get excited about this. This stuff's so cool. Space is rad. If you don't like space... I don't have a follow-up to that. <laughs> Sorry. I'm busy. What is this one called? Strands of gas. I'm not sure if... Could you say stra strandular? Is that a... <laughs> is that a word? Let's move on. Illuminated remains... Light. Wait, is that... Okay, wanted to see if there was a combo version. 
We're back to red. Is, oh, here's a good example of uh, some of that hue shift going on. You can see some orange happening in with this. Let's bring the size down a little bit. Yeah. All right. Clear that. Next one. Disrupted dust. Ooh. Irregular vapors. Oh, weird. They're regular, all right. That, that is for sure. Moving on. Ne Nebucloud Fabricator. Come on, you love it. You love the names that I put on these things. Come on, there are so many of these after, I think I was a quarter of the way through the list and I was like, oh, why did I start making custom names? This one could be used for just clouds, you know, again, or texture fill, putting text on there, that kind of thing. What is this one? Nebu, <laughs> Nebu Cloud Fabricator. That's right. Gaseous Anomaly. Ooh. Check that out. Interesting. And we'll move down. Let's see. Turbulent viscosity. A little too small there. Let's bring that up. Whoa. Oh, yeah. So, again, I've got red picked here, and it's, it's throwing down all sorts of crazy colors. And here I've even got embedded in this is, like, these kind of patches of, of dark... These trails of, like, dark dust. I mean, look at that. Just in one brush, you've already got kind of a cool thing started. Clear that. This one is very similar. Oh, yeah. Oh. I mean, that looks like a dark corner to be in. Oy. So rad. Uh, the outer rim. Let's uh, let's go to some like yellow for this. So you can see why I call this the outer rim. So each time you go over it, it's gonna put that rim along the outermost edge. As long as you go fill it in. And I think I was kind of thinking of like the was it the cat's eye nebula. Trying to get it look like it's exploding out from the center. Not quite the effect that I was going for, but it's still kind of cool. It's a little tricky to use, but it's cool. If you don't think it's cool, that's that's fine. This is defined clouds soft because there's also defined clouds hard, which looks remarkably similar. Yeah. Hard and then softer up here. Okay. Let's clear that. Moving on. Defined turbulence soft. The color I've got is yellow, and this is just, this is painting an epic, I mean, this could almost pass as like clouds of flying around in Jupiter. Get your, get your imagination going on that. <clears throat> Defined turbulence hard. You, you can see this is made from similar components or the same components, but just set up a little different. It gives more of a harder, harder edge. I mean, this texture, this could be used for so many different things, I think. 
Uh, but again, you can see how many different colors it's throwing down, just having yellow picked. And if you don't like that, you can, of course, modify the brush. I'm not going to show you how to do that right now, but you can do it. Nova Blasted. Is this more of like a stamp? Yeah, that's kind of cool. Like a it's kind of explosion. All right. It's pretty cool. It's definitely from some cloud photos. You can see. So that's what's cool about it. It's not it's not entirely simulated. It is, you know, from nature to your digital tablet. This summer, one artist in their iPad on a journey. <laughs> what brush am I using? Turbulent Echo Light. See, like this one's got some of the dark, some of the dark stuff in it that's occasionally covering up old. And we are on to Turbulent Echo. Oh, hey, that's kind of cool. We can turn the size down a little bit. Nice. Now, I know there's one more that I'm missing. It must be, and I have like two versions of this set for whatever reason. Let me locate it. Look at that list. Here we go. I think this is the real list. I may have shown you brushes that are are not even available. And if I did that, I'm I'm sorry. <clears throat> but in particular, I need to be able to show you what is easily my favorite brush. Behold the <laughs> The St Star Paint Pro. So it's pressure sensitive. So if you go real light, you can start doing these these little clusters. It's one of the I I've tried so many star brushes, and this this one took a lot of work to get the the dots of them just right. I wanted them to have like a little bit of a glow. So when you would do this fine, this really light stuff, you could kind of get them where it would almost look like a cloud in there, you know? I wanted it to be able to do that. And so I think I made maybe 20 versions of this brush before I finally was happy with the effect. But it just, you keep going and it's just so cool. But this is the Nebula Action brush set available on our website and Gumroad. Some of them are free. Get the full set for a dollar. You are totally able to pay more if you want to support a dorky, space-loving artist like myself. Go ahead and you buy them for what you think is worth, buddy. Now that I've shown you all of them, you can make that decision. What's that first one here? I'll show you. This is just kind of like a instructions. Just kind of stamp it. Then you can, then you can read it. But you don't need that. Because uh, you heard it from me, and I went through most of these and showed you a lot of cool stuff. So I hope these uh, inspire you. I hope you have fun with the free ones. And if you go uh, go all in and spend that dollar, that hard-earned dollar on on the full pack, I thank you. I thank you wholeheartedly for supporting uh, artists and uh, 
I hope these inspire you to do a lot of uh, cool space scenes. And uh, anyway, thank you for watching.